Hello biology apprentices, today we're going to talk about some genetic concepts and the first steps to answer single trait crosses in the Punit squared. So, every living creature on earth has the genetic information of life contained inside the DNA. If this DNA is held within a nucleus, then we call it eukaryotic cells. If this DNA is just floating around the cytoplasm, then we call it prokaryotic cells. But remember that whether it is animal, plant, or bacterial cells, all of these have genetic material known as this DNA. Some of the most important scientists that discovered DNA or described it for the first time were James Watson and Francis Crick. They made the first complete description of this beautiful molecule. And nowadays we know that this molecule has a very effective packaging system. DNA has two shapes the relaxed form and the compact one. How can we turn from a relaxed form to a compact one? Well, DNA starts to coil around these proteins known as histones and will form the compact form of DNA known as the chromosomes. Chromosomes are very important when the cell wants to divide because it's the easiest way to move the genetic information from one cell to the other. DNA will have functional fragments with a specific information that we call as genes. This information will be translated into physical traits. In this image, the genes will be the darkened bands that we have in the chromosome, so we can imagine it like functional fragments with information for specific traits. Now, these genes are going to have a specific location on the DNA strands, and this location is the locus. Remember that locus will be the position of the gene in the DNA. Now, in these next images, we're going to see some celebrities. Probably you recognize some of them and their children. It is very clear that, the, that these children look like their parents. This is because of the genetic information that has been passed from one generation to the other. And this is the actual definition of inheritance. Now, we already discussed what it is a trait. It could be all the physical characteristics that can be seen in an organism, or if they can't be seen, at least they can be measured in a certain way. That's a trait. In humans, the most common traits will be the color of the eyes, the color of the hair, the shape of the face, uh, the type of hair, the height, and probably any other physical thing. But remember, if we can't see it, it will be also a trait, but uh, it must be measured in certain way. Think about the metabolic processes in your body. Those could be traits also. Now, let's talk about a little bit of history. Back in 1800s, an Austrian monk known as Gregor Mendel made very important observations when he was crossing these pea plants. And because of this observation, he was able to determine some of the genetic laws that we use nowadays. Because of this, we call Gen Gregor Mendel as the father of genetics. Back in that time, there were no microscopes available. We didn't know even what was DNA. But because of the very keen and very powerful scientific observations that uh, Gregor Mendel was able to make, uh, he obtained actual rules that apply nowadays using this very simple model, the P plant. Now we have chromosome number and the alleles. You need to know that every species has particular chromosomes inside each of, our, of their cells. The cells contain 46 chromosomes grouped in pairs. Pairs that are formed by chromosomes given by our mother and our father. Because of the genetic information they have, we can classify the chromosomes in two types, the autosomes and the sexual chromosomes. Autosomes will be from pair number one to pair 22, and their genes will contain information mostly for body traits. Now, the last pair known as sims will have genes that mostly codifies for sexual traits or the things that determine whether if it is a boy or a girl. Now, when an organism produces its gametes, the total number of chromosomes in the cells are going to be splitted. So we have half of the information in each of the gametes. 
So if a male is going to produce sperms, half of the sperms will be containing an X chromosome. If we are focusing just in our sexual chromosomes, and half of the sperms will have the Y chromosome. Now, when these sperms join with the ovules, which contained also half of the information, but in case of the girl will be just X chromosomes, then we're going to have the common combination that forms good boys. The combination of the XX and the combination for which that we're just seeing here, the combinations of the last pair of chromosomes, but the same will happen with the 46 total chromosomes that we have as humans. Now, in the pair of chromosomes received from our parents, known as homologous chromosomes, some genes will have the same locus, remember that it is a place, or the same information, but with small differences. These slightly different genes are known as the alleles. In this picture, we are seeing two homologous chromosomes, and we are focusing our attention in these genes because they are located in the exact same position, but in different chromosomes, and they have the same information, but with slightly uh, small differences, we call them alleles. Remember that alleles are defined as the different version of a certain gene. They have the same place, but with a little difference inside the information they contain. If an allele is going to mask or hide the presence of another gene, it's going to be dominant. Picture it as a strong allele or a strong gene that will mask the presence of another. If an allele needs the presence of another to produce a physical trait, think about two weak genes that need to be together to produce a physical trait, we call it as recessive alleles. Generally, the genes are going to have very complex names. And in biology and genetics, we use a combination of letters and numbers to name these genes or alleles. But for our practical cases, we will just one or two letters. Dominant alleles will be represented with uppercase letters and recessive alleles will be represented with lowercase letters. A couple more concepts that you need to understand are genotype, phenotype, homozygous, and heterozygous. Now, the first three letters will give you the hint of the definition. Genotype will be all the genes or the genetic composition of an organism. Phenotype will be the physical properties, or in other words, the physical traits that we can see in an organism. Homozygous, remember that homo means same, will be when the homologous chromosomes have the same alleles or alleles with the same strength. In this case, it could be two dominant alleles or two recessive alleles. Etherozygous will be, remember that ether means different, so in this case will be when different alleles are located in the homologous pair of chromosomes. In this case, alleles with different strength. We have a dominant one and a recessive one. As an example, it is said that a person with blue eyes, that's the person's phenotype, physical properties, blue eyes, will be produced by recessive alleles for that trait. We need two alleles because they are weak genes and they must be together to produce the actual physical trait. Now, if a person has brown eyes, that's the person's phenotype. This phenotype, brown eyes, will be produced by two conditions. It could be a dominant homozygous condition. In other words, this person received one dominant gene from one of its uh, parents and one other dominant gene from the other parent. But we have another condition. It could be etherozygous, which means one dominant gene from one of the parents and one recessive gene received from the other. Remember that the dominant gene masks the presence of the recessive. So it doesn't matter that this person has the weak gene for having blue eyes, the strong one will win. In this case, this person will be a carrier for the recessive gene of having blue eyes. Now, because of biology is a science of exceptions, you need to see a couple of exceptions to this rule. If the genetic condition it is said to be co-dominant, then 
Both of the parents' alleles will be expressed at the same time in the phenotype of the offspring. Picture this example. We have a dominant gene for having red flowers and a recessive gene for having white flowers. If these two organisms cross, the offspring will be heterozygous, which means one dominant gene and one recessive one. Normally, the dominant gene will win and all the offspring will be red, but in the case of being a codominant condition, both traits are going to be expressed in the phenotype. In this case, we will have spotted flowers, red and white, for the case of the heterozygous condition. The last exemption is if the condition is said to be incomplete dominant. In this case, we are going to have an intermediate version of the genes. We have a dominant gene for red color, a recessive gene for white color, and in the heterozygous offspring, we're going to have the intermediate version of both phenotypes, which in this case will be pink flowers. Well, I hope you had enjoyed this video. I hope it is useful, useful for you to clarify these uh, concepts. We are going to use them later when we solve genetic problems in simple trait crosses. And remember to maintain your scientific thinking and to love biology. See you later. Bye.